Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. How was my break? I don't know, this version of me hasn't been on it yet. I'm filming this in advance, oh yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed the two weeks off of content. <laughs> it is that time of year again where I document and share my different income revenue streams of my business. This is something that I've now been doing four years in a row. The first year was just a blog post and then since then I've been making these like video updates like documenting the changes in my income pie chart because we all love a good pie chart. And turns out this series is not just documenting my revenue streams, it's also documenting my hair growth as you can see from the thumbnails of previous videos. So this video is the accounts for my business from April 2020 to March 2021. So it's basically a full pandemic year of accounts. And in my video from last year, which I actually posted in like September time, we were already like in the pandemic and I just rewatched it and I was like very worried because my financial situation then was very different to kind of like how the next six months happened. And we will get onto that because I genuinely did not remember my state of when I was filming that video until I watched it. I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah. So before we dive into the pie chart and all of the percentages, I just wanted to acknowledge how damn lucky I am that I was able to still do my job um, during this whole last year and a half. I already worked from home, so I didn't have a lot of adjusting to do. And even though it was a bit rocky at the beginning, actually this last year for me has been fine financially. Like I know a lot of people have really struggled and I just wanted to acknowledge that I've been one of the lucky people who it hasn't actually impacted my finances. But I still wanted to do this video because I think it's really interesting to have these conversations about money, especially in a creative, industry and also like a new industry that not a lot of people understand and there's a lot of like misconceptions about and there's also it would seem a lot of people who are aspiring creators and like want to do this and so I hope that these videos can act as some sort of like idea of how one person does it in terms of where my revenue streams come from because for every single creator it is so so different. But what I really want to get across with these videos is how important it is for creators and any kind of like freelancer, entrepreneur, working for yourself kind of person to not have all of your eggs in one basket and really diversify the revenue streams that you have. And if anything, the last year and a half has taught us how important that is because there's very little that we have control over. So this whole thing started because for my financial year 2017 to 2018, I looked at where all of my income was coming from and I realized that 80% of my income was coming from sponsorships and brand deals. And I wasn't happy about that because it felt like all of my eggs were in one basket. And so I'm kind of striving <laughs> to hit 50%. That's like what I want. And it's not that I want to be doing less of those necessarily, but I just want to like buff out the other areas of my business so that I can just feel a bit more secure and stable because with brand deals, they are few and far between. Like you never know when the next one is going to come in. And also like how many views and engagement and followers and stuff like all of these like vanity metrics are the things that determine how much you might get paid for a brand deal. And so I want to still kind of like have a sustainable business, whether or not like my videos are performing well or if people are engaging with my Instagram posts because that is stuff that I have found over the years that if I'm chasing those numbers, like growing and like, why isn't my click-through rate high enough? Like that just sends me down a spiral of despair. So that first year, 80% of my income came from brand deals. And so I went hard on things like Patreon and affiliates because I had a lot more control over that and it just felt a lot more aligned with my values and my community and things like that. And so then the next year, 2018 to 2019, I got down to 58% of my income came from brand deals and I was really happy about that. But then last year, 72% of my income came from brand deals. And so it kind of bumped up again. Um, but in that video, I explained how there were two brand deals in particular that were just like the highest paid deals that I'd ever had. And I kind of treat them as anomalies. And actually in the last financial year, the one that we're going to look at the pie chart for, this time I had one big brand deal. So those two from the year before, one was double the other one and the smaller one 
was what I got for a brand deal this time around. So that massive, massive brand deal, that was such an anomaly. Like, it's honestly never gonna happen again. But the smaller one, the smaller of the big ones did. Here we go. Here is the pie chart. Dun, dun, dun. So let's dive into each of these sections. So first up, brand deals. This is now at 58.6%. And so I'm really pleased that it went down from last year's chunk of the pie, like this feels like much more sustainable. <laughs> this channel is a bit more established now, so I've also been able to do some more brand deals here. And I think I've been doing probably less on the Hannah Witten channel than maybe previous years. Obviously I charge less for brand deals on this channel because it's not as big. However, my favorite thing is when I do a sponsored video on this channel and I always see comments just being like, ooh, creating that brand friendly channels pay it off. And I'm like, yes it is. Because some of the sponsors that I get on this channel would never, <laughs> never sponsor the sex education channel. And like fair play to them, they wouldn't. Like it doesn't make any sense. And sometimes I get brands coming to me asking to sponsor that channel and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense for your brand. Like you probably wanna have your brand be featured on this channel instead. So the next biggest slice of the pie was actually affiliates at 14.1%. And last year it was 4.3% of my income. And I will say actually my overall income, like the 100%, like the hard number is basically the same. Like my income didn't really go up or down from 2019 to 2020 to 2020. 20 to 2021. So someone might be able to do the maths of like actually figuring out roughly the percentage increase per category each year. I was a wizard at maths when I was 17 and it's all gone, it's all gone. <laughs> all I can do is pie charts now apparently. So this maybe is my favorite statistic from all of my income revenue streams. And that is 92% of my affiliates, my affiliate income came from love honey. So that's 92% of it coming from sex toys. A lot of people were buying sex toys in the pandemic and also I was just making a lot more content about sex toys and just like having a really fun time trying out different kinds of content that I could make around sex toys. So yeah, that is why I think that is the second biggest slice of the pie. However, I don't think that will continue. One, I haven't made a whole lot of sex toy videos recently, until this week actually, on the Hannah Witten channel we had a sex toy video, but that's the first one in a while. And also I think this kind of like frenzy of self-discovery and like solo sex and stuff might be like petering out now that people are like getting out there and doing more stuff. Not that like sex toys are a replacement for like living your life, they can be an addition to it all. But yeah, I'm not getting my hopes up that I'm gonna have that good a year on affiliates going forwards. Next up, my fave coming in at 12.3% up from 8.1% last year is Patreon. Doo -doo -doo. I call my Patreon the common room and members of the common room can pay to support the sex education channel that I have, the doing it podcast, and just generally like all of the different work that I do. And there's lots of different community perks. Like we have a private Discord server. I create monthly reading lists and there's a monthly live stream and they also just get like early access to videos and ad free access to the podcast and maybe soon video to the podcast. I don't know, I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. We're also on the road to 1000 patrons. So the video podcast thing is like part of that goal. So, you know, check the link in the description if you wanna join. So my Patreon has grown over the last year and I think the main reason for that is the special offer that I ran at the beginning of 2021 for the common room bookmark, which I love. Yes, here's the bookmark, I'm obsessed. Got to talk to me about my book and reading, do not disturb. I do have a few spares of these. So any newbie patrons who recently signed up and so missed the special offer, look out for a post that I may or may not do about <laughs> sending you these. Next up, we have AdSense coming in at 8.6% and last year it was 6.5%. And so basically right at the beginning of lockdown, this just plummeted. My AdSense just got cut in half as advertisers were panicking and were just like pulling out of YouTube because the companies didn't know when their next paycheck was coming in from basically. But it did start to pick up again around 
the summer, I think, like summer autumn time. And then it kind of creeped back up to like what was normal for me. I'm sorry, I haven't explained. If you didn't know, AdSense is the money I get from Google slash YouTube for the ads that like play on and during and after these videos. It also includes um, any money that I earn from people who have YouTube premium and watch my content. And by the way, if you are curious per view, I get more money from YouTube premium than I do from ads. So things that I think contributed to my overall AdSense from the last year not like experiencing a drop was because I launched the new Hormone Diary series. And so that got a lot of attention and a lot of views. And so a lot of people watching that content and the AdSense on that content is like good, okay. I don't know, because maybe because it's about fertility. And so like there's advertisers that wanna advertise against that, I don't know. I will say my CPM, which is like cost per meal, like how much money you earn per thousand views is dog shite on the Hannah Witten channel. It's not that great here either, um, but it's better here. But holy shit, the sex and relationships content, it's just like, it's honestly sad when I compare like my CPM from sex and relationships to like the CPM of a friend who might make content about tech and productivity. I'm like, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> um, but that's why things like Patreon are so important. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so there's that series that's been doing really well. And so I think that's contributed to a lot of my AdSense. And then also it's my first full year of having two YouTube channels. So I started this channel in October, 2019. So the previous financial year only had like, I can't do quick maths with months, but like maybe like five, six months of AdSense from this channel and obviously it was much, much smaller then. So this is the first um, financial breakdown that we have where we've had a full year of two channels. So I definitely think that's contributed as well. Next up at 3.4%, previously at 1.1%. So a bit of an increase here, hello, is panels and speaking events. And this one is funny to me because in the previous video that I made where we were like September pandemic, I was just like, well, all my speaking engagements have gone out the window. That income has plummeted like it doesn't even exist anymore and then I don't know what happened but suddenly companies and events and stuff they just started figuring out how to do everything online so I did do a lot of speaking and panels and um, doing like webinars and presentations and stuff that has been paid and like really fun actually I've, I've kind of like really gotten into doing that. So yeah, I've done a lot of that just like from home on Zoom. Next up with a tiny increase, 1.7% from a previous 1.5 is my podcast. And I said this in my last one as well, but like, oh boy, if I was doing the podcast for money, that podcast would not exist. <laughs> the podcast gets good numbers and good downloads, but just the podcast advertising biz, like it seems like you need to be getting like over a hundred thousand. <laughs> downloads a month or something for it to kind of like add up and for advertisers to be like, oh, we wanna advertise on your podcast. I think in this financial year, I think I maybe did like one host read ad and the rest of it is just like the ads that you see on YouTube where just like random ads come on. But yeah, so thank God for Patreon as well because the patrons helped me to continue doing the podcast because it takes up a lot of time. And then also I pay my assistant Megan um, to do the social media and the transcripts and everything. So I'm basically in the red. Is that what it's called? If you're in the red, you're in the negative. I'm in the red or whatever um, when it comes to the podcast. And so that's why um, Patreon. Thank you. <laughs> Patreon making up for this 1.7% of my income podcast. Wow. I just love the podcast so much though. So I'm not gonna stop doing it. I just think it's hilarious how little money I earn from it. I also definitely see the podcast as more of a profile builder and an excuse for me to reach out to people and talk to them who like under not having a podcast circumstances, I don't know how I would approach them or like, it's just good to have an excuse to be like, oh, hey, I really like your work. Do you want to come on my podcast? And then we can be best friends. <laughs> no, but it's, it's just, I love doing it. I love it. And so then at 0.4%, which is previously at 5.8, which actually is not as big of a deal, it's not that scary, is writing. And that's because I've not published any books or signed any book deals recently. I'm just not interested in writing at the moment. I prefer talking. 
and I think I'm better at it than writing. So that 0.4% is basically just some royalties from doing it, um, but yeah, no book deals, no books coming out, so no like big lump sum payments basically. And then finally we have other <laughs> coming in at 0.9%, which was previously 0.7. So you know, less than 1%. And my other this year basically includes like my one third of banging book club money that comes in from like the podcast advertising that um, comes in from those past episodes because people still listen to them apparently. And so like every few months or so we hit the threshold of like earning enough money where they'll actually pay us. Um, so that's my third of that. Um, it also includes some Twitch income at the beginning of the pandemic. I did a lot of Twitch streaming because I was desperate for connection with people. It was actually really fun. I do love Twitch streaming. I just don't have the time for it and it's not like a priority of mine, but I do enjoy it when I do it. And then the other thing that that other includes is Sexy Scribbles because I actually have like a digital product. What the hell? But yeah, Sexy Scribbles is the sexy, sex positive, body positive coloring page that um, people who are signed up to my newsletter get a free download of a new one every month. And I work with an artist to make them. And currently the Sexy Scribbles pages that are available with my newsletter every month are done by uh, Louis Lauger, who's a non-binary German illustrator. And the previous year they were done by Maddie and I have a Sexy Scribbles coloring ebook, like a digital book that is available to download with all of the ones that Maddie did last year and a few bonus ones that weren't available in the newsletter. So that is what kind of like comes under other as well. So that's a deep dive into the pie chart, but I also just wanted to talk a bit more about the COVID impact because I talked a lot about this in the last video that I made. And in that video, I was really nervous about not making a profit in my business this year because at the beginning of the year, I had lots of brand deals canceled or postponed. AdSense was down by like 50%. I had no speaking or events engagements. And actually in that video, I said that in that first six months, my brand deals were at 52% of my income and Patreon was at 20%. So that kind of like shows that Patreon was making up like such a huge portion of my income in that first six months of the pandemic. And I was watching that video, I was like, why was I so scared about not turning a profit? And then I had a look and it turns out that 75% of my income for this year, 2020 to 2021, came in the second half of it. So that is why, like in that first six months, I was like, oh shit. And like, I have a lot of business costs. I pay my editor, my assistant, like I pay a lot of contractors and my business costs didn't change. So I was working with the same amount of outgoings, but in that first six months, my incoming was just like, mm, mm, mm. and so I think that was why I was like really quite stressed in that video. But little did I know that it was all going to pick up. And I definitely think I had this like scarcity mindset of just like, okay, everything's been canceled. Everything has dropped. Like I'm never going to make a profit in my business again. But yeah, I hope you found this insightful. I really enjoy documenting this every year, just like seeing how my pie chart changes, how my priorities change and like where income is coming from and all of this kind of stuff. There's really not a lot of transparency in this industry. And whenever I do meet other creators and we are doing like the same brand deals, we'll like compare like how much did they pay you? How much did they pay you? And these conversations are so important to have. So hopefully this is useful to some people or you're just nosy and interested in pie charts like me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.